Hi, so today we're going to go over the difference between cool and warm primary colors and then how we can mix them to get kind of a more neutral version of those primaries. So here on this side we have the warmer versions and then this is the cooler versions. It's a little hard to tell with the red. Hopefully you can see it well. Um, and let's look at what they're called really quick. So for the red, the warmer red is cadmium red um, and then crim crimson is the cooler version. Uh, cadmium yellow is typically what's used for the warm and then like a yellow light Hansa for the cool. For blue, I think there's some other versions that can be used, but this is what I had on hand. There's a uh, cerulean blue for the warm blue and then for the cooler blue, like a phthalo blue. So I was just gonna kind of show what each color looked like on the cool side, warm side, and then when we mix them, just so you can see the difference. And then I thought we could do like a color spectrum down below with just cool, just warm. So let's go ahead and try that. <clears throat> All right, so I'm gonna do cool first, just basically a little swatch. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just put some here so that I can mix it. Go ahead and wash my brush real quick. And I'll add the warm, just pure warm um, cadmium red. Let's scoot over a bit. The red is probably the hardest to see the difference, especially on film. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and take some of that and just mix it now on my paper directly, just so you can kind of see. Again, it the red's not the best example. Um, cool, neutral, warm. Let's go ahead and do yellow. Yellow is gonna be a lot more uh, noticeable. So this is the cool yellow. And again, I'm just gonna, while I have it on my brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and leave a little bit here so I can blend it, neutralize it. Wash my brush, get some of that warm yellow. All right, I'll take some of that. We will mix it to get a more neutral yellow. And I don't always suggest mixing on your paper. You can always mix onto your palette and then drag it over here, but just to save some time and to give you a quick example, um, that's what I'm doing. So again, this one still looks like it might be a little too warm. I'm just gonna add a little more, go back until I get it more of like a in between the two. Okay, um, now for the blue. <clears throat> again, that one's a much more dramatic difference than the red. Start with the cool. So cool doesn't always just mean that it's darker. Like as you can tell, um, if this was in black and white, um, this would obviously look darker. Um, these two and this one might look pretty similar. So it's not always about the darkness. It's just about the undertones. The warm blue. Now I'll go ahead and mix that. All right. So I hope you can kind of tell the difference here, but um, yeah, this would be typically when you're gonna try to make something using just primary colors, you'd wanna try to start with something like this and then you'll get the most accurate representation of 
the entire color wheel, so like secondary and tertiary colors once you mix those. <clears throat> um, yeah, so we'll just go ahead and do a quick color spectrum using just the cool, just the warm. And then maybe I'll do one with like the neutral colors later. We'll see. Uh, let's start with... Okay, so we're gonna start with cool. So I'm gonna start with red. I like to just drag a little too much there. You can drag the paint across and then I kind of just let it fade out a bit because then what I'm going to do is come in with that yellow after I wash my brush. Take the cool yellow. I'm going to start kind of far over here and then work my way back and then I can blend them until I get kind of an orange color. And it's still kind of a harsh line right there, so I'm just going to wash my brush and kind of blend it out with like a clean brush until it starts to look more like a smooth transition. There we go. Um, so again, I'm blending on paper, so it's not the smoothest, but you get the idea. Yellow to kind of an orange, red, orange, red. So now I might drag this yellow a little further just so I can make sure I have enough space to add some green or add the blue to make the green. So now I'm gonna take the cool blue and this is really dark color so maybe I should start with a little less. And I'm gonna start over here because I want this part to be pure blue. I wanna make sure I have enough space to overlap the red later to get my purple or violet. Um, and I'm coming into, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and stop there because it's just going to overpower the yellow. And I'm going to wash my brush and go back in with some yellow to really get it to blend into a green. <clears throat> there we go. Just kind of go back and forth until it smooths out. All right, so we've got our yellow, yellow, green, green, and then kind of like a green blue right there. And then we got our pure blue. Whoops. And let's go ahead and add back where we started with the red. We're going to end on red. And I'm going to blend it back to make some violet or purple. And, ooh. A little too much there. So sometimes it's good to use, if you really want to make a nice purple, to use a magenta instead of a red because you will get a very dark kind of maroon color if you use just red and blue, which can be good for other things. Depends what you're doing. So let's do more blue here, just to... We can just make this whole spot. Well, we do want like a red-violet as well, so I might add a little more red at the very end. So we got kind of a blue. Um, again, it kind of went from blue to like a violet, like a red-violet, and then it would end on red again. Uh, kind of tricky to see it, but... Like that. I'll go ahead and do the same thing with the warm colors and we'll see if there's any difference in how they blend together. All right, warm red. Warm yellow, I'm gonna start pretty far back there. I prefer the warm yellow in most cases to the cool yellow. But again, it depends what you're doing, what you're trying to accomplish. It just seems to blend a little better already. So we got our yellow, yellow-orange, 
red, orange, and red. The green will be interesting. It'll definitely be a warmer green when we add this. So let's start pretty far back with the blue. Blue. I'm going to stop there because I don't want to lose any of my pure yellow. Clean and fresh. <clears throat> so then I can just, oops, got some of the green in there. Let's try to definitely a warmer green. So I think if you're trying to aim for like a nice blue green color, the cooler colors is better, right? Um, if you're wanting like a yellow orange, I think the warm yellow is better with the warm red. So really it just kind of depends what you're trying to do, um, what you're painting. But uh, yeah, let's do the last. Okay, we'll go ahead and do the warm blue a little further along here. We don't lose any loose space. And then we can add red for warm violet color. It's still making it pretty dark. But I think it looks a little more purple than the um this one came out super dark. Like it's you can't even really see the purple in there. This one you can actually see We have like our blue, a pretty nice just violet color. I don't know if you can see it very well on here. And then it becomes a red violet and then back to red. So there you go. That's just a quick little, I mean, wasn't that quick, sorry. <laughs> I kind of talked a lot, but I think this is a good example of cool versus warm. Um, maybe in a different video, I'll just do like a plain, you know, normal mixed neutral primary color spectrum, but yeah. That's all I have. Thank you.